Okay, everyone, we've reached Wednesday morning uh, as we continue our journey through the international break and our journey through Celtic's recent signings. Today, we're finding out about Austin Trusty, uh, and we're going to do that by speaking to Hal from Chef United Way, the Sheffield United fan-created YouTube channel and podcast, and I took that right from their Twitter or X bio. Uh, Hal, thanks so much for joining me, and you're, you're in Cyprus as well. Yeah, and I've made a lot more effort with my backdrop than you have. <laughs> you, but that's going to all appear. You, you don't realise this because you just see the, the blue screen, but you're going to have a nice wee... In fact, I might just stick loads of Celtic shirts in the background just to yeah. make you look daft now you've said that. <laughs> How are you getting on? Yeah, I'm in beautiful Cyprus. It's already 34 degrees. We're doing this early in the morning, so it's early biscuits and I'm already sweating. Um, but we're going to talk about my favourite subject, which is uh, Sheffield United selling players. Okay, well, uh, we can get your thoughts on that and uh, and let you know, or, or you can let me know what you think of Austin Trusty. Now, you were saying that you you watched them a hell of a lot last season. Um, what what are the initial thoughts on him moving to Celtic? Well, I watched him a lot for Sheffield United last season, but I also watched quite a bit of him for Birmingham City as well. And he was actually a player that I cited as one that I would like Sheffield United to sign when he played for Birmingham City he was absolutely fantastic it was about I think 40 plus games that he played bagged four goals he was their fans player of the season I always think if you win that accolade you've done enough especially as he was only a lone player never fall in love with a lone player they say but Birmingham City fans they did and he was on loan from Arsenal and you don't get to Arsenal unless you're a, you know a pretty decent player anyway now he was playing left back against us when he was playing for Birmingham City so if you're looking for someone who's versatile, Austin Trusty is that man. Left wing back, left back, but primarily over 200 career games at centre back. And Sheffield United saw enough in him to see that with the three at the back that we played back then, we don't know, that he would be that left sided centre back because we saw that he could bring the ball forward. And as some people who watch Sheffield United know, we play a very exciting, expansive, overlapping centre backs uh, kind of system which requires players who are very good on the ball who can play centre-back. So hopefully that gives you a, a very brief, broad strokes idea of what Trusty's all about. OK, we'll revisit some of that. First of all, if it's not too difficult for you, and apologies for doing this, could you tell me a little bit about Sheffield United's season last year, just to give us a bit of a feeling for the team that Austin Trusty was playing for? Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> so I think it's, if I'm going a bit broader on that, you can't judge Austin Trusty on last season because all of our team, certainly our back line, looked bad. And, yeah. it, it, you know, I'm judging him based on the championship and what he did for Birmingham City. And I'd actually really have liked to have seen him play for Sheffield United this season in the championship. We only got a small glimpse of him. He played in the Cup, actually played very well against Wrexham. And I think, I'm not saying that's his level. I think he's better than that. But obviously, he looked very good in that game. And I think in the championship, he would have been a standout. And of course, he'll play alongside uh, fellow American Cameron Carter Vickers, who's a former Sheffield United player. Yes. And yep. we know that, you know, those two should have a really good partnership together. And we th probably saw more of Cameron Carter Vickers because, again, we saw him in the championship. And I really would say don't draw any conclusions when you look at highlights from Austin last season because. All of our players let us down, even Al Ahmed Hodzic, who many would say is, is probably one of our best players. That's the thing I've seen, and we've seen quite a few Sheffield United fans popping up in various places, and maybe some Celtic fans who saw Trusty last season saying, you know, we've signed a bit of a dud here. You've seen enough from him to suggest that he's a pretty capable player? Yeah, although he has got concentration issues, and I think he will hopefully... I was going to say grow out of it. He's already at the age where he should have done. So I, I want to see a little bit more there, like just positioning and concentration. Those are the two things that is probably his his weak areas. But, you know, left-sided defenders, six foot three, very, very capable with his left foot, can play in multiple positions. That's what Celtic saw in him. And he gives you that option. Now, I don't know if he's going to be a regular starter for Celtic, but I think if he starts well, I do believe he's a confidence player. And unfortunately... He didn't start well at Sheffield United. Uh, he had good. He had a few good games. There was like a sort of period up to Christmas where we were thinking, hey, we signed a really good player here. 
I remember a lot of Blades defending him, and then he stopped defending himself. <laughs> himself. And, and it just sort of fell off a little bit, tailed off. And so we had a sort of interesting start, fairly good, and a poor finish. And unfortunately, a lot of Blades will remember because in football, you're only as good as your sort of most recent games. They'll, they'll probably remember some of his, his poorer performances. Okay. Uh was there good in there as well last season, even at Premier League? I mean, how yeah. often did he actually play for you? Was, was he fairly regular last season? I mean, it felt like a lot <laughs> because he wasn't always playing that well. Yeah, he played 32 games. I mean, pretty much a regular. Didn't initially get into uh, Paul Heckingbottom's side and there was a lot of us when we were getting battered early on, clamouring for let's play the players you've signed do you back him? Do you not? Why have you brought him in? And Trusty was one of those that we weren't seeing. We eventually put him in. And like I say, he looked okay. Then he looked good. Then he looked bad. We, we saw the whole gamut of, of Trusty. And I really think that his dream was playing Premier League football, which he achieved not with Arsenal, but with Sheffield United. And I think uh, it might have been one of those dreams that quickly turned to a nightmare and not because it was his fault, but because he was playing in sort of a, a very difficult set, set of circumstances where you get promoted to Sheffield United, you don't have money to spend, and you're now competing in the league that spends the most money on wages. So even though lots of our fans were clamouring for us to sign free transfers, well, we couldn't even compete in that realm. So I think it was very, very difficult for him for what he came into. And we spent five million on trustee. And the fact that we've managed to make um, a profit on on a player who, who didn't increase in his value, we thought, because he actually played far better the season prior, even though he was in a league lower, I think we'll we'll look back at that and say actually that's that's probably pretty good business. But I wouldn't be surprised if he now goes on like Cameron Carter Vickers to be a very good centre back for Celtic. Yeah, I don't know how Carter Vickers was at Sheffield United, but certainly other clubs, you know, Spurs fans didn't think too highly of him, and we heard that when we signed him two or three years ago. And Carter Vickers has been immense for us. He's the best centre back since Virgil van Dijk um, he's, he's the best centre back that, that we've had at the club um, and maybe there's similarities with Trusty there's clear similarities between Carter Vickers and Trusty they're both American Carter Vickers could kind of play in the right back area couldn't he a bit like Trusty in the left but I, but I think they've both been signed as centre backs and hopefully they've got some sort of a relationship there you kind of touched on why you think Sheffield United sold him? That was going to be one of my questions. Was it just that the deal made sense for, for you guys? Oh, we just need the money. I mean, I don't think we necessarily would want to sell. You, you parachute payments and all that stuff, no? Yeah, I'm not a, a money a money guy. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I don't know the background. I do know that we've overspent at times and clamoring back. You know, we, we signed players like Rian Brewster for like 23.5 million. So... We then like sign yeah. players like Ollie McBurney for what was it twenty million, and then lose him for nothing. You you don't make money that way; you lose it. So we have, despite parachute payments, got huge wage demands, and I think we needed to clear the decks. And I think we expected the players to leave to be Vinicius Souza, Anil Ahmed Hodzic, and you know maybe Gus Harmer. And in reality, we've kept those players, thankfully, and we've sold William Asula to Newcastle and Austin Trusty to Celtic, and no one would have predicted that at the start of the season. Okay. God, Vinicius Souza, that was a, a name Celtic fans will know as well. We were linked to him for what seemed like years. It was probably a couple of weeks. Um, yeah, uh, strengths, just to just to get it down. Um, strengths as a player, good at coming out with the ball, you said, yeah. Trusty. Yeah, and actually, you mentioned Cameron Carter-Vickers, and I do think that they have similarities. And actually, Cameron Carter-Vickers was very popular at Sheffield United, although he, d he wasn't a regular, but he did play uh, in that game when we beat Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough, and he'll always be fondly remembered. But uh, a bit like Trusty, when I list some of these strengths, you're probably going to think, yeah, this sounds like Cameron Carter-Vickers. I think Cameron Carter-Vickers is a bit more of a unit. He certainly seems to have right. filled out uh, since his yeah. time at, at beautiful downtown Bramall Lane. But like him... You know, good in the air. That is probably one of Trusty's best attributes. And I think it was Wrexham this season where he scored. So he's not bad from set pieces. It was a corner. So watching attacking set pieces, he'll be a threat. Also because he's good in the air, good at defending set pieces. Um, on his day, good at marking. Off his day, bad at marking. So very hard to uh, work that one out. I mean, tackling, I always thought he put in a very good shift when it came to like those crunching tackles, fair crunching tackles. He does seem like a fair player. 
uh, never really got involved in any nonsense, doesn't seem to be one that gets involved in Argy Bargy, uh, speaks very, very well. I don't know how much you place on that, but I think he's an intelligent man, uh, which hopefully leads to an intelligent footballer. Tremendous work rate. He is brave. Um, I think there are times we've seen that decision-making and concentration be the areas that perhaps need a little bit of work, uh, but he's quick. And when you've got pace, you can often, as we saw with Carl Walker, um, certainly when he was younger at Sheffield United, you, you can actually get away with a few errors if you can recover. And I don't know how pacey all the strikers he's going to be up against uh, in, in the Scottish Premiership are going to be, but hopefully that is a, an attribute that, in terms of physical attributes that lends itself well to him being successful. Uh, he's got decent stamina. And we also saw moments when I thought, wow, he's really strong because he was going up against uh, some absolute beasts in the Prem. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a pretty definitive rundown. I'm intrigued by the pace bit because we were linked with uh, Dara O'Shea, all someone who I think is one of the quickest players in the the Premier League. Um, it obviously didn't happen. Uh, so Rogers wanted pace, so it seems like Trusty may well fit that bill, which is quite exciting. How, how quick are we talking? Oh, very similar to... O'Shea, who may be faster, I don't know. I've not watched that much of uh, Dara O'Shea, but uh, you know, from what I've seen, I think Dara O'Shea is probably a better player, <laughs> and he's yeah, younger. Yeah. younger. Uh, and I didn't, you know, and he's also a leader, isn't he? And he's aggressive, and he's uh, got that fantastic jumping reach, and yeah, uh, pro- probably a better centre back. But you've got Trusty, so don't worry about O'Shea uh, yet, and see see how Trusty gets on. Like I said, I do believe he's a confidence player. If you get a chance to watch any interviews with him, I think you'll instantly warm to him. He speaks really, really well. He seems like a lovely lad. He seems very honest and he's very affable and amenable. So he's the kind of guy that will speak regularly. And I think he'll be the kind of guy that will be very popular in the dressing room. Okay. Uh, popular with fans as well. What was? I mean, I know, as you said earlier, it was a tough time for Sheffield United fans. But is he someone that fans can take to? He came out and said things uh, last season that on paper an American would say. And, and American fans would love. Yorkshire folk perhaps weren't as happy with one or two of his comments, like going away to Arsenal and he's saying things like, you know, we go to win every game. Now, that's obviously what he should say, what you want him to say. Like I say, Americans will lap that up. But um, we're not going to win at Arsenal. Um, <laughs> we have to be realistic. It's It's just, okay, fine. I would have maybe have said something slightly different if, if I was in that situation. I would say something like, you know, we know this is going to be one of the toughest away games of the season. Every single one of us will give always 100%. You can guarantee that with our vocal backing. Who knows? Something like that. Leave it a bit ambiguous. Um, I don't know. One or two fans sort of leapt on that. But I think that he's got to say things like that. So I don't blame him for that. So he's incredibly positive. He's got that kind of, um, if you're a cricket fan, you know, the way Brendan McCullum speaks. You know, Brendan McCullum will, will jump on a journalist that says, of course, you'll lose games. They'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why do you need to say that? You know, And he's probably a bit like that. Real positive thinker. And uh, that probably doesn't surprise you. So, so many Americans are that way. And that's not a bad thing. Not a bad thing at all. Yeah. I mean, he is very American. Whereas Carter Vickers isn't really American. Um, in, in the way he kind of, obviously, English accent and a, a, a bit different, I would say. But he's going to come come across very American. Yeah, he's from Pennsylvania, and uh, you don't get more American than that. He started in the Amateur United Soccer League. Uh, he was with Philadelphia Union, I remember, and he then played for one of their affiliate teams. I can't remember the name of that, although I do remember that he did play college soccer with the North Carolina Tar Heels. Go Heels. And that is one of the best names uh, that I've heard. And he, did he was we very play popular. at their stadium earlier in preseason? I'm sure we played you might, it. You might have done. Oh, do you know the name of their stadium? No. No, that being cre- credible <laughs> knowledge, if you if you if you reeled that off, I'm pretty sure uh, we played one of our English games against Man City or Chelsea, won them both at um, at, at that stadium. Mm. Interesting. Well, he spent he spent a lot of time in America. I mean, he didn't move to Arsenal until 2022, I think, and that, and they they got him from Colorado Rapids. They actually paid 1.5 million pounds for him. And uh, he would actually stay on loan at Colorado Rapids and then return to Arsenal, then go on loan to Birmingham. And uh, 48 appearances for Birmingham, four goals. You know, that's in all competitions. Player of the season by their supporters. You know, like I've said before, very, very popular. Good start to his career. 
And then I think if I was advising Austin Trusty, and this is an awful thing for me to say because there's no team I love more, I actually wouldn't have suggested that he should have joined Sheffield United at that point. His career was only going one way. And I think it yeah. was going to be fairly, you know, almost anyone would have guessed that the three teams promoted will all, almost always go straight back down. And, and I, I perhaps if he'd had another option, I don't know if he did, either another season on loan, just in case it didn't work out, um, or if he could have like maybe a, a, another championship side or a, uh, a team that's sort of bottom half Premier League. I think Bournemouth, for example, a Brentford, a team like that, he would have been absolutely perfect. And we'd probably be talking about him as a maybe 10, 12 million defender right now. Okay. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, this, this has been really interesting to find out about Austin Trusty. It seems like you, you, you acknowledge his faults and maybe concentration is one of those things, but um, he, he seems to have the kind of raw attributes that should excite Celtic fans going forward. Yeah, I mean, what I would say is some of his passing, I remember now, was a, was a little bit astray, but I would be excited about the goal threat in the opposition box. Uh, okay. You know, he's, he is a player that, like I say, scored four goals from centre back, and that's that's not bad for any any defender. You get that anything around that kind of number. Uh, that's for Birmingham City, as I mentioned before. And and this yeah. season, like I say, we saw him play for Sheffield United in the cup, and uh, yeah, he was uh, he was he was what two appearances in the cup this season and uh, and one goal. You know, carries on that kind of record, a goal every other game. But uh, like I say, started well for us this season think this would have been a really good season for him to turn it around, win over some of those Blades fans who felt like they'd seen enough. You know, Vinicius Souza's already doing that. He's completely changing the narrative because so many Blades fans had completely written him off. And I would go as far as to say many Sheffield United fans actively disliked Souza last season. But now, winning us rounds, liking him a lot. Anil Ahmed Hodzic, as I say, one of our best players, played brilliantly when we got promotion, played poorly in the Prem, winning us back again now. But that you could say that for so many because really last season was one that I just tried to pretend never happened yeah yeah well we all we all like to do that have our seasons from time to time any any final comments Hal anything else we should know about Austin Trusty or just anything well I like him I want him to do well I want to wish him the very best I hope it works I think it'd be quite fun to have two American centre-backs as a partnership that's very rare uh, in, in in Europe uh, so let's see how that goes watch any interviews that you can with him I think you'll really like him I want him to start well do back him if you can if you're watching this and you regularly attend don't get on his back because I think that's probably where it all went wrong for him and uh, he may he might not be might because he's such a positive guy in the way he speaks he might not be a confidence player at all but it doesn't hurt to back a new signing and if he does start a little sloppy don't jump on him. Let's support him. And hopefully I can look back on this just like I do with Cameron Carter-Vickers or other players that Sheffield United have sold, like Olivier Tebier to uh, to Celtic. I wanted him to do well. You know, another centre-back. Um, hopefully it'll be a similar vein and uh, very, very successful. Amazing, How Thanks so much for, for chatting to me. Anytime.